Hello, everyone. My name is Kenny, and I'm the program coordinator at Startspace. It's so wonderful to be here today, and welcome to the Networking Fundamentals with Delwyn Keysberry, Director at Ideas and Action. Presented today as part of the Future Founders Festival 2021 in partnership with Study Melbourne and Startspace, powered by the State Library, Victoria. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge all Aboriginal clans of Victoria and pay respects to their elders past and present. We also acknowledge and pay respects to indigenous people around the world. Before we begin the session, I'm gonna run through some housekeeping information for you. First of all, to participate in audience Q&A for the session, please use the Slido Ask the Questions box. This is where you can ask questions for our festival presenters. We'll get to as many as we can at the end of the session. To interact with each other or make comments, please use the join the conversation chat box. You can also react to the event using the emoji along the bottom of the live stream panel. Use our festival hashtag FFP21 to share with us what you're watching and what you're enjoying during the whole festival. Thanks again for joining us and I sincerely hope that you will enjoy the session. And now I'd like to hand over to Delwyn to kick us off. Delwyn. Thank you, Kenny. Imagine you've just walked out of a workshop, a conference room, a lecture hall, and you're walking towards a networking session. There's going to be coffee there, there are going to be snacks there. And my task over the next 30 minutes is to walk and kind of talk you through some ideas of how you can sharpen your networking skills. Hello, everyone. My name is Delwyn Keysbury. Thank you, Kenny, for the introduction. I am a trainer and speaker based here in Melbourne. For those of you on social media, if you're keen to connect, you can find me at Hey Delwyn on the usuals, IG, Twitter, and of course, LinkedIn. Let's begin. Network, networking fundamentals. For those of you type A personalities in the room, this is the overview. I'm gonna be discussing five strategies to uh, think about, to implement before, during, and after your next networking session. I'll be talking about three common networking mistakes you can easily avoid. And I'll be ending with one of the most important things to remember when networking. Also, there is a worksheet available because I know many of you might be just uh, in the middle of your university adventures. You might be just finishing, even if you're a fresh graduate or you're a young professional. Research suggests to us that as we take notes, as we write things down when we are learning and uh, listening, that information retains a lot better. So these are the details for that worksheet. All you need to do is go to this link you see on your screens bit.ly slash hey worksheet okay and the instructions are here just click on, click on the file tab uh, make a copy and then that will be your very own copy which you can use scribble on print out just to write and jot things down okay i'll give you a few more seconds just to take down these details so bit.ly slash hey net uh, hey worksheet okay and you'll see a sheet pop up, which looks like what you see on your screens on your left. I'm gonna change my slides in five, four, three, two, and one. Moving along, everyone stay along till the very end because at the very end, I'll be talking about a free gift I'd like to give to you. And also kind of tease you, I wanna um, talk a little bit about an up upcoming networking opportunity. Okay, so again, stay tuned till the very end because I'd like to share some of these bonuses with you. Moving along, here is your opening question just to get your creative, uh, your, your thinking juices going. What does networking mean or look like to you? What comes to mind? Take a moment, have a bit of a think. Is it something like this? For those of you in university, you might, you might have heard the phrase networking before. You might be thinking, you know, I mean, my first year, second year, third year of university, university is, uh, uh, networking is not for me. So some of you, uh, this kind of image conjures up in your mind. 
for some of you, you might be thinking of pictures and images like these, where you are in a big conference hall, a big swanky, cool and modern kind of place where you're in between sessions and they announce 15 minute coffee and networking break. So some of you are thinking of these kind of images. Some of you might be thinking of <laughs> networking in terms of these kinds of uh, plug and play cables. FYI, that is not what we're uh, referring to today. We're not, we won't be discussing this kind of networking. Okay, rather we'll be discussing networking face-to-face -face and virtually. Now I'm in very, very aware that we are in the middle of COVID-19 season. So this kind of image would probably come to mind um, it, uh, for some of you where we're doing the whole elbow bump thing. We have our face masks on. Um, so back to the question, and here is the official definition, okay? Networking, it is the action or process of interacting with others to exchange information and develop professional or social context. And here's the next question. Why is networking important? Why should I care? Why should you care about networking? Why have the organizers of this festival decided, why have they decided to include networking as part of, their, of your learning experience? Before I answer this question, allow me to share a little bit about my journey and then I'll explain to you at the end how um, networking has opened doors for me. So I arrived in Australia many moons ago in the year 2000. I did my undergrad in physiotherapy. I finished physio in 2004. I worked for a few years in healthcare. In 2009, I did my MBA and I had a bit of a pivot. I moved more towards business development and marketing. Uh, in 2011, I moved back to where I was born. I, was, I am from Brunei. For those of you who are from Malaysia or Singapore, you will know where Brunei is. It's a small country in Southeast Asia. There I lived on for about six years where I worked with the likes of Microsoft with Asia Inc Forum and the British High Commission. And then fast forward again in 2017, my wife and my kids, we moved back to Australia, to Adelaide specifically. And then in 2020, in January of last year, we moved to Melbourne just before lockdown happened. And that's a separate story. But this is my journey over the last 20 or so years. Along the way, I've done a, a bunch of cool things. I've organized a bunch of networking events I've been to many, many networking events. I've made many mistakes at networking events. I've learned many lessons at networking events. Along the way as well, um, all these little moments of connections led me to different opportunities. For example, I've also done a few TEDx talks all around um, how to connect with others through social media. Uh, if for those of you on YouTube, feel free to uh, put in my name there and you should see my TEDx talk come up. I've been involved in conferences. And this last slide is just to, I guess, give you a bit of a snapshot of the kinds of um, characters that I've met along the way. I've connected with volunteers, I've connected with government workers, with private sector workers. Um, and you might even recognize uh, a few artists as well. Uh, Red Hong Yi is right there in the middle of the top. Um, Daniel Flynn from Thank You Australia. So along the way, I've had the great honor and privilege to meet and network and connect with many, many people. And FYI, uh, on your top left, that is my wife, Jillian. She sends her regards to everyone. All right, so why is networking important? My idea I want to give to you is that Networking is important because it expands your existing circles. That's number one. Number two, you can use networking to explore opportunities. And number three, some of you might be thinking, what's next after university? What's next now that I'm in my first, second year of working as a young professional? Networking can help you grow your business or your career. Moving along, everyone, here are some networking strategies that you can use and think about before, during, and after your next networking session. Number one is the intro pitch. The intro pitch. Here's a question. What's the most commonly asked question when you meet someone for the first time? 
All right. So think about the last time you met someone virtually or in uh, in down in a cafe or in university or at a conference. What's one of the first things that they ask? They ask, so what do you do? Tell me about yourself. What do you do? And even from that first instant, that first moment with that new friend, that new contact, that new potential uh, client or uh, prospect, your answer is so, so important. All right, so some of you, your introduction might go along the lines of something like this. Hello, my name is blank. I am a, for example, a student studying at the University of Melbourne, full stop. And for many of us, that is how we would naturally and instinctively respond to that question of, so what do you do? But let me um, teach you something here. Uh, I wanna show you the intro pitch. So not just an introduction, but adding a pitch, um, a way of you know, giving a quick snapshot of to the other person about who you are and what you do and why it will be valuable for the other person to uh, connect deeper with you. And in your worksheets, everyone, you'll see that there is space there for you to fill in the blanks or have a think more about this intro pitch. And I framed it around um, and specifically for university students, all right? So it'll go along the lines of something like this. Hello, my name is blank. I am a student of something at which university. And then the next part is so, so important. I am seeking blank, you talk about your interest and I will be valuable to your organization because blank, what makes you unique? And then end with a call to action. Let's look at an example, all right? So someone, uh, you meet someone at a conference, at a, uh, an expo for careers, you meet a bunch of HR people, for example, you meet someone from the big four, you meet with the, the people in, involved with this festival. And so the question comes, so tell me, Kenny, what do you do? Or Ali, what do you do? Or John, what do you do? Hello, my name is Ali Wong. I am a final year marketing student at the University of Melbourne. Okay, so many of us stop there. The next part is crucial, like I mentioned. I am seeking a graduate level position or a summer internship. I would be valuable to your organization because I can help your business grow by 5% or something which will hook them into the conversation. Right? You want to say something which, were, which won't um, bore them, but rather which will kind of make them think, gosh, I got to spend at least 30 more seconds with this person. So in your own time, have a think about what kind of uh, value you can bring to that um, introduction or that connection. It might be something like uh, growing their business. It could be something like helping them research certain things. It could be things that you've learned from university and you want to implement that within the organization. Have a think about how you'll fill in that part of the blank. And then the call to action. And this is also an important part. Could I have your business card? I'll email you some ideas that I have in mind. All right, everyone. So that is the intro pitch. And the difference between an introduction and an, and an intro pitch, as you can see, is both are very, very two introduction styles. One is just saying who you want, what you do. The other one just adds a part where we should connect because dash, dash, dash. All right, I'll come back to this at the end because for many of us in university, you might be thinking, I've got no idea how to answer this question. Uh, and for those of you, if you want to ask more about this, there will be some time at the very end. Feel free to bring this up again towards the end. But that is the intro pitch. All right, the next part, the next lesson is the blue chip approach. All right, so you're convinced that networking is important. You might be thinking, which networking event where should I go to meet valuable connections? Where should I go? I've got no clue. Melbourne or wherever you are in Australia or wherever you're watching from, be it overseas or here in Australia, you might be thinking, all right, I get the idea. Networking is important, but where should I begin? Which networking events should I attend? And this is the, uh, the basic approach, all right? It's what I call the basic approach. You Google or you type into your internet search engine networking events and hope for the best, you know, fingers crossed, 
hope for the best. You register for events via things like meetup.com, Eventbrite, uh, Facebook events, university functions, or you wait to be invited. And all of these three options are perfectly fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with these ideas, uh, with these strategies, with these, op uh, with these um, styles of searching for a networking event. But can I submit to you that this is the basic approach? And I'd like to pre present to you the blue chip approach, okay? So these are um, ideas that you can implement and go away to think about, which may bring you more success in finding more specific kinds of networking events to attend. All right, so the first one is to ask a trusted colleague, friend, or close contact for suggestions, meaning you're already asking and tapping into someone else's minds and their resources about, all right, you've been in the industry for a lot longer than I have. You're in the, the, the industry that I want to be in. Who should I connect with and where should I go um, to meet with other like-minded people within this particular industry? So that's the first one. You ask someone who you trust for suggestions. Number two is to do some research. So this will take a bit of effort and find out about the local startup ecosystem. From my experience of being uh, involved in many, many events, uh, I've come to know that um, the local startup ecosystem is a great place to start. If you've got no idea, if you're even unsure about where you want to be in three years, five years and beyond, if you are thinking, I think I'm entrepreneurial, but I don't know where to begin, it's always a good idea to connect with and get to know the local existing stakeholders and players in the startup ecosystem. And the last one is to attend branded or focused events, all right? So if you think about the basic approach, just randomly Googling things, now you're thinking about specific branded events. And here's some ideas uh, like from Startspace, from TEDx, from General Assembly, from Startmate. So these are already established um, uh, event organizers, or these are already established uh, program um, um, uh, curators who they've crafted events with people like you in mind, all right? They want to offer you value. They want to you know, introduce you to the ecosystem. So start to think about uh, which are the branded events around you. All right, everyone, let's move on. Time is quickly ticking away and we are halfway through. All right, number three is what to do during um, a networking event. So what do you do when you meet someone for the first time? So this is in-person networking, right? So not virtual, but rather in-person. And here are some ideas, okay? This image you see in front of you are stacks of business cards. Um, you know, once upon a time, and even arguably today, business cards still are important. Some may say we've moved to QR codes, but otherwise business cards are still an important tool for networking. All right, so three ideas. The first one is to be clear about the types of people you'd like to connect with. To be clear about the types of people you would like to connect with. Meaning that if you are a marketing student, it would be valuable to your career progression to meet with other marketing professionals or people in that ecosystem, say branding, say advertising, say bankers, uh, say other professionals, uh, uh, you know, professions where marketing is involved to some extent. You know, for example, if you are a marketing student and if you go to, let me think of something in healthcare, you go to a, um, a pharmacist convention. Yes, it may be useful to connect with some pharmacy companies who are looking for marketing ex uh, expertise. But uh, if you were going to that event, hoping to meet with other people in your field of expertise, chances are it might be harder to connect with others in that space. Another example, if you're a marketing student and you go to say a farming expo or convention in rural Victoria, again, chances are that yes, you might meet some, but you may not meet with many people who may be keen to engage with your, uh, your expertise. All right, so be clear about the kinds of people you'd like to connect with. Number two is this idea of quality, not quantity. So instead of you walk into a big room, there are you know, 200 people there, 
you might be think you might be tempted to you know grab your business cards and give you know 15 20 30 out to as many people as you can and let me tell you that from experience i know that this is not a uh, a strategy that is going to work well so think about instead of uh, giving you know 15 cards to people just zoom in on five people that you can connect with on a deeper level, right? So not 15, not many, many, just five or three or even one. So quality, not quantity, all right? And the last one is a good old fashioned reminder that first impressions matter. And yes, it is 2021. Yes, we all know that you know, beauty is within but first impressions still matter, which means that if you are due for a, a visit to the, the, to the barbershop <laughs> to just tidy up around the edges, I know back in university, I kind of let my hair grow out a little bit longer than I should have, uh, you know, so, and recruiters and people already working, all these things are in their subconscious, you know, does this person that you're meeting for the first time, do they present well? Are they rocking up with a shirt which is, you know, unironed? Is there lint on their shoulders? You know, all these little things. <laughs> and if I can also give you this, this, um, uh, this thought, bring along breath mints. Okay, so this is a bit of a funny one, but the, but the point is that you know, it's there's nothing quite as um, shocking as meeting someone for the first time. And sometimes if the other person forgets you. to, um, you know, have a little breath mint before they meet you you'll know it straight away. And so vice versa, always bring along a little bag of breath mints with you. And that, that will go a long way because first impressions matter, all right? Number four, during virtual or LinkedIn networking, and truth be told everyone, I could spend three hours on this uh, subtopic alone, okay? But because of time, again, I'm gonna give you three quick ideas and thoughts. All right, so you might be thinking virtual, LinkedIn, Zoom, you know, those kind of virtual places. And many of us over the last 18 months have gotten accustomed to this kind of setting, right? So a screen, a camera, uh, multiple faces on the screen. Some of us might turn the, the video uh, visuals off. Some of us might turn the audio off, but you get the idea. It's a virtual meeting place, not in person. I can't reach out to give you an elbow shake or a handshake, but I'm meeting you online. All right, so quick slide to talk about LinkedIn. If you're not already on LinkedIn, everyone, if it's one of the things that you do after today's webinar, I want to challenge you and you know submit to you that it is one of the most important things to jump on. So LinkedIn, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of stats. Um, and the idea is to let you know that professionals just like just like yourself, uh, university people, you know, fresh graduates, just like yourself, entrepreneurs, uh, startup uh, founders, we know the importance of LinkedIn, all right? About 4 million monthly users in Australia. Um, the, next, the, the third line users will log in on average 8.8 .8 times per week in Australia. Uh, the, the fourth point, one in two LinkedIn users would buy or engage with a company you know, from the platform and all the big companies here in Australia are on LinkedIn. So very quickly, some uh, thoughts uh, for your virtual networking. First one, like I said, is to jump on LinkedIn, start or fine tune your LinkedIn profile. You know, we're, we're, we're in July, so it's kind of a good time to start thinking about your LinkedIn profile, especially if you haven't touched it in a long time. Okay, so bring it up, start a LinkedIn, or just fine tune your LinkedIn profile. Number two is on LinkedIn. Again, this, this idea of quality, not quantity. While it's tempting to just go to the tab where it says, you know, find connections and just add, 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 as many people as you want. <laughs> Again, have a bit of a think about who would be valuable for me to connect with. The more precise and the more focused your uh, approach is, the better it will be for you. All right, and number three, virtual, the last tip for virtual connections. And again, I could go on and on about this one, but very quickly, when you meet someone for the first time through virtual meetings, 
like for example, um, during this festival, there'll be opportunities for you to engage and to meet and network with other people. Uh, here are some quick uh, tips. The first one is your energy levels. Through the camera of your, your smart device, your laptop, your desktop, the idea is to kind of visualize cranking up your energy levels by at least 20%. Because if we were to talk normally on LinkedIn, sometimes like I'm doing now, we may appear very subdued and low energy. And that has the, the chance of boring the other person. So the idea is to crank it up a little bit so that you appear um, a little bit more animated and your energy comes through the, the, the camera. Uh, number two, as you can see, like I'm doing, I'm kind of purposely adding gestures in my in my um, my presentation, again, research tells us that it's not just what we hear; it's also what we see. So all these little um, facial expressions, your posture, what your hands are doing, you know, all these things uh, do help make a great impression. And the third one is eye contact. You might be thinking, eye contact. I'm 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 in my room here. There's no one here. So who do I look at? Um, so here's the the trick look straight into the lens of the camera, like right there, right there. All right, so this is me looking at the camera lens and this is me looking at my screen. And one of the things we see so often, like what I'm doing now, if you're your lecturers, your tutors, uh, people at work, they present like this, where they, they look at their screen, at their slides and they read up their slides. And you're already probably sensing, all right, I've lost some connection simply from those last 10 seconds of Delwin looking at the screen and not into the camera lens. And so the idea of this looking into the camera is just to mimic eye contact, which is if we go back to the real world and real life networking, establish eye contact, which is so, so powerful, right? So three quick tips for your virtual or LinkedIn networking um, adventures ahead. No, next one. <laughs> And time is flying by, everyone. Four minutes left. All right, the last one, and this you can do after your networking event, which is to always offer value first. Offer value first, all right? So some of us might be thinking, how do I um, leverage my networking, you know, all these business cards, which I got after attending this event. How do I get the most out of them? How do I, you know, get all these treasures that people are telling me, which comes after networking. But let me tell you and challenge you to park that idea. Rather think about, instead of uh, thinking, what can I get out of this? Always think first, how can I offer value first? What can you bring to the table? How can you help that new contact? And so it could be things, as you can see, number two, is to introduce them to someone who you think might be valuable, uh, email them an interesting article, um, offer to have a free 15 minute audit of their marketing or their research or whatever your field of expertise is. Uh, but the idea is to give them something first. So don't ask for something, but rather give them something first. And it's important to send this follow-up uh, email or message or call within the first 24 hours. And the last one. <laughs> um, so this is one of these um, hard to quantify things, but I put down the, the bottom there is not to appear desperate. Don't appear desperate. So imagine again, this is day one after meeting someone yesterday and you've got a choice of like, dear so-and-so, I met you yesterday. I was, I was so, so impressed. I so hope we can connect more in the future. Please, 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 please. <laughs> and you can already hear how that comes off slightly desperate. And a, a, a colleague of mine was saying, yeah, that's kind of how it is when you're meeting someone for the first time, when, you, when you're trying to uh, get to know someone or you're dating or you're trying to court someone or you know use you know, um, you know, not professional networking, but casual dating networking, you know. So the idea is not to appear desperate. And truth be told, this one will take practice. It's time to move on to the next one. Three common mistakes very quickly. The first one is rushing in. So all these three mistakes, right? Um, they're, they're applicable both when you meet someone in person and also virtually, um, but specifically in person when you meet when you walk into a busy room say 30 people 
50 people, 200 people, sometimes we don't want to be the only person standing alone there with a coffee cup in your hand, not chatting with someone. So we instinctively, instinctively try and rush to the first person. Let me tell you to just take a tab, pause, have a look around and going back to our earlier point, connect with people who you believe would be valuable to your, uh, your network. So don't rush in, okay? Number two is seeking comfort. Again, this idea is that when you go to an event and imagine you see a group of people who you've met before and it's so, so tempting just to go straight to that group because they offer you comfort. Ah, I'm not alone here. I, I, I'm, I won't be talking to strangers. But I can tell you from experience that many of my, um, all these doors of opportunities have come from meeting people outside my, my comfort, comfort zones. Okay, so don't seek comfort. Number three is another reminder, um, ask for introductions. Okay, so if you want, if you know that the person you're keen to connect with might be slightly out of your league, it could be a, a HR exec, someone in senior management. If you somehow uh, know someone there who can introduce you, ask, for an introduction. It's always helpful to go and meet someone when someone's already warming up that other person for you to connect with, okay? So three mistakes you can easily um, avoid at your next, working, your next networking event. All right, well, uh, last one before we, we, we tune off. <laughs> My time has very, very quickly passed. One of the most important things, on your screen you see Michael Jordan and you also see uh, Ronda Rousey, two top level athletes, okay? In many, many of their interviews, they talk about the importance of practice, okay? The importance of practice and not just hoping and dreaming for the big uh, success highlight reel, those big championship moments, but they talk about the importance of practice, 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 and this idea of being prepared. So while I've given you, you know, eight years, 10 years worth of um, networking ideas and tips and tricks in half an hour, it's going to go back to a very simple thought of it's going to take practice. And for many of the ideas that I've presented to you is this notion of being prepared. You have to prepare your intro pitch. You have to prepare and think about where you want to be in the next few years. You have to prepare to you know, offer them value first. All these things takes preparation, all right? Um, so the next few slides I can quickly go through, but Kenny, I'm aware of the time. Uh, I'll pass it back to you to jump into the Q&As because there might be some people with questions and, uh, and, and I'll end off at the end talking about the free gift and upcoming networking opportunity. Thank you so much, Delwin. That was really, really good. I personally learned so much and I agree with you. Networking is so, so important Great. for uh, everybody really, but also you know, for students who I'm sure are tuning in, they uh, can find all of your practical tips really, really useful because it's such a nerve wracking um, yeah. new thing to do, right? Yeah. But, um, you're right, actually, we've got a, a lots of really good questions, but I, we have one uh, that we want to ask you. Sure. Um, have you got any tips for shy people to prepare and improve confidence before heading to a networking event? So whether it be an in-person or a virtual event? Yeah, it's, it's such, it's one of these um, timeless questions. If I'm shy, if I'm an introvert, if I do not like meeting people, what is someone like me to do? Um, there the are two ideas, okay? Uh, two practical ideas. Number one is I've already touched on, which is to practice. Mm -hmm. Because whether we like it or not, okay? You're gonna have to meet people for your interviews, um, for upcoming, you know, even when you're at work already, you know, it's gonna be kind of, um, th th there are jobs where you're purely working alone, like now with, with virtual working from home as well, it's not impossible to, only be with yourself all day long every day but the chances are along your professional journey you will be uh, around other people so the first one will kind of sound kind of wishy-washy and broad but it's it's to practice because it takes time to learn these interpersonal communication skills like i was saying before eye contact gestures body language all these things takes practice and there are people like coaches I've done a few coaching sessions where I've, I've, I've 
uh, talked about these things with people because um, everyone, you know, we learn about the theory about marketing or accounting or medicine in university, but there's so little time spent on interpersonal communication skills. So that's the first idea is to practice. And the second uh, thought, Kenny, is that imagine if you're an introvert or shy person in a big room and uh, I'll use the imagery of swans, all right? So if you imagine other, other animals, like monkeys are very playful, very high energy. Uh, lions are very, very confident. Um, swans, the, the thing about swans is that these are animals where once they make a connection, their connections last a lifetime, right? So forget about the, the noise, the many, many tens, 15, 20 people there find or aim to meet at least one person that you get along with and connect deeply with him or her or them okay yeah so can you those are my, my ideas for you know shy people or introverts thank you so much and that's really beautiful uh, way to end i guess because um yeah as you said before it's not about the quantity but it's the quality so yeah really really great tip there and again mm. Delwin, thank you so much for your time uh presenting a very very insightful and i'm sure a lot of people would learn so much from it and um again what you said before about practice is very important yeah. um i'd like to also let everyone know that we have a few things um in the festival where everybody can um tune in into and uh, practice their networking skills because yeah. it's, it's like a muscle, isn't it? You have yeah, to that's right. be practicing it. So there's two things you can do at the festival. Uh, so the first thing is head to the networking hub just on the lobby, join there, and you can have a virtual networking session with um, someone else from the festival attendee. Great. The second thing you can do is um, there's a networking session with the Confidence Hacker at the end of the festival, which is tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. So again, don't miss it. Uh, you really all need to uh, just go and uh, try your best, uh, be brave, and you'll learn something. Uh, again, thanks so much, Dylan. And yeah, um, yeah uh, can you very give me give me ten more seconds. I mentioned the free gift and the little tease at the start. Uh, everyone, head on to bit.ly slash hey networking uh, for your free download. I've kind of put together a few tips and tricks. Um, a little bit of a checklist for your net, your next, your next networking event, and also um, you'll pop into my email um, database so I can up send you some ideas and upcoming uh, events I'm involved in as well. And these are my details. Thanks, Kenny. Wow, that's really great. Thanks so much for being so generous with all of mm. your tips and practical things that people can download. Thanks sure. so much for that. Great. Well, anyway, that's all the time that we have for now. Uh, but thank you so much, Darwin. Hope to see you in person soon. All right. See you, Kenny. See you, everyone. Bye.